Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. No, I, I completely understand. It's just the tape said I have 60 seconds to cut off my arm or I have to wear socks with sandals. Yeah, no, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Hey. Hello and welcome to Ryan's Movie Reviews. Today we are going to be talking about the latest installment in one of my favorite horror franchises, the Saw franchise. Today we'll be talking about the new movie, Spiral. Now, Spiral follows Detective Zeke Banks, played by Chris Rock, investigating a bunch of grisly, gruesome jigsaw killings that's focusing around corrupt cops and the police department he works in. With the help of his rookie partner, they investigate things while Chris Rock lives in the shadow of his retired detective father, Marcus Banks, played by Samuel Jackson. <clears throat> Now, to make it simple for you guys, we're going to go ahead and cut this review into a bunch of different parts. We're going to be talking about characters. You bet we're going to be talking about traps as well. Uh, the tone of the movie is really important too. Going to be comparing the movie to the rest of the franchise as well. Going to give my opinion on the new Jigsaw, mention some of my favorite things about the movie, and my least favorite. Give you some fun trivia for funsies. Go into spoiler talk towards the end so I don't spoil anything for you guys. And finally give you guys my final score of the review and let you know if I recommend the movie or not. So, without further ado, let's get started. I'd like to start off the characters by saying the majority of the cast did fantastic. I'm going to be focusing on some specific characters, uh, most of the main characters, and giving you guys my opinion on their performance and the role they played in the movie. However, before we do that, the rest of the cast did absolutely great. I liked all of them. They did a great job of kind of maintaining that world that they were trying to create here uh, and really adding to the tension and emotions that we're supposed to feel with all these characters. So, let's talk about the first character, Zeke Banks. Detective Zeke Banks, played by Chris Rock, is the main character of Spiral. You can really see him um, be this angry detective that really is just living in the shadow of his retired detective father that everyone respected. On the other hand, not anyone really respects Zeke. Um, being the son of this respected detective, he has a lot to live up to. And you can really tell one of my favorite parts about him in this movie is he doesn't really care. He's a lone wolf. He doesn't really care what anyone says about him, thinks about him, or does to him. He just keeps moving forward and continues to live by the, as long as I'm helping people, I don't care if I'm an asshole while doing it. Quickly talking about Chris Rock's performance in this, he is by far my favorite part of this movie because of how passionate he was doing this role. He's actually said before that he's a huge fan of the Saw franchise, and fun fact about this is he was the one who pitched this story to Lionsgate. Uh, he was the one that wrote most of the movie as well, and starring in it made him the second actor to both write and star in a Saw film, the first one being Lee Wanell in Saw 1. So with that being said, you can really tell Chris Rock put a lot of passion and effort into this role. As you all know, he's mostly known for his stand-up comedy and his comedic roles in movies, but in this he did great straying away from that and going into something more serious and dramatic. Usually when comedians stray away from things that they're used to doing and do things more serious, not many people seem to uh, take that in a good note, but I would definitely say that Chris Rock did a fantastic job in putting himself in this world. Marcus Banks, played by Samuel Jackson. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, and I saw this coming, but he does not have that much screen time in this movie. The marketing for this movie was a Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson movie, which I don't blame them because they are definitely the top build, highest a-list actors on this cast. So you're obviously going to want to let everyone know, hey look, Sam Jackson, hey look, Chris Rock, to really get those butts in seats in theaters. When it comes to Sam Jackson's character, it kind of just boils down to, hey look, it's the dad. Um, he's there to really add more depth and, I guess, past 
of the story. He's involved with a lot of the flashbacks when Chris Rock is remembering um, his past, when he was first becoming an officer, why he became an officer. It's just there to kind of give you that aspect and dynamic between Zeke Banks and Marcus Banks having that, you know, relationship of, hey, Dad, I'm trying to live up to the golden man that you were as a detective while still having that, you know, animosity of you never loved me as a child or why don't we just go out and have lunch someday? You don't really care about me. You just care about your job. He's there to be the father, to be that emotional rope that uh, Chris Rock can swing from and have a reason to really pursue doing what he's doing because throughout the entire movie he's being compared to his dad, how amazing his dad was, and you can really see it in Chris Rock's character that he wants to be just as good as his dad, if not more. All in all, Sam Jackson as Chris Rock's father, playing Marcus Banks, did fantastic. We all love Sam Jackson. We like seeing him cuss at people. We like seeing him, or hearing him say mother. Um, shout out to YouTube for the bleep. I just really, really liked him in it. Uh, he played himself, basically. And we all love Sam Jackson, so not complaining there. William Shank, the rookie cop coming in to partner with Zeke Banks, played by Max Minghella. I hope I said that correctly, but I loved him as well. He did a great job portraying that wide-eyed rookie detective that just follows behind Chris Rock's character and is willing to learn and do the right thing to change, make a change in their world, you know, help the police department any way he can to help them become better people, to help the citizens, and to really give Zeke Banks, Chris Rock's character, an anchor to hold on to. Because throughout the entire movie, I would say almost every single police officer, detective, agent, everyone in the police agency just hates Chris Rock's character. You know, they all don't like him mainly because his father was such a better man. You know, Zeke Banks likes to work alone. He's Mr. Lone Wolf. He wants to get the job done no matter what it takes, even if that means being an asshole to everyone around you. So what William brings to the table is that friend that Chris Rock can hold on to and really just trust in and have someone there that he can interact with and not just be alone the entire movie. Max did absolutely fantastic portraying that character, and we'll get into some spoiler talk about all these characters toward the end of the video. Nothing like the classics. Now, the traps in this movie, I will admit, are brutal. They are absolutely, unforgivingly brutal. And I would argue to say they're some of the, I would say, nastiest traps in the Saw franchise. Now, the Saw franchise has a bunch of very creative and complex traps. These traps in this movie, I would say, are extremely simple yet effective. As John Kramer said himself in the movie Jigsaw, this trap is simple. Some of the best ones are. It, he, it's the simplicity in these traps that make them so easy to follow while still being very satisfying watching them go through it. So I would say some of the best parts in the movie, as it is with almost every Saw movie, is just realizing, okay, we're coming up on a scene where there's going to be a trap, What's it going to look like? Is it going to be gruesome? Is this person going to survive? And I feel like they do a great job in that area. And not to mention, this is the most recent Saw film, which means they have access to so much more effects, CGI, just crazy advancements we've made in special effects ever since the first Saw, where they're using a bottle of ketchup and a couple of pig innards. So the traps, all in all, are simple, yet effective, easy to follow, and the effects are beautiful. However, one of my favorite parts about the trap scenes in this movie are the connections we have to the characters in the traps. As I said before, and as it's said in the trailer, this jigsaw killer is targeting police officers in the police department that Zeke works in. 
it really lets you build a connection with the people before you see them in the trap. Usually in a Saul movie, it opens up with the trap. You have no idea what the person uh, has gone through yet. You don't really understand their feelings. You don't know why they're there until they press play on that tape recorder. And that's basically all the exposition you get and description on that character before they're killed by a jigsaw trap. While this movie does have a trap where you don't know much about the victim, the rest of the traps in the movie, you have a backstory as to who the character is, who they were as a person, and what they did to get themselves in that position. So, all in all, I would say the traps were a definite win in this movie. Maybe I'm nitpicking here, but I felt like there could have been more traps. Um, fun trivia about it, though, was... The movie kept getting an NC-17 rating when uh, submitted into the ratings departments in Hollywood. I think there's a specific name for that, but I'm not sure. Um, so Derek, Darren Lynn Bowsman actually had to remove uh, one of the traps of someone actually getting their face peeled off in order to qualify for an R rating. Um, because with that scene in the movie, it just kept getting an NC-17 rating. So that specific trap isn't in the movie. But I'm hoping maybe if there's an unrated director's cut that's released when the movie gets put out on Blu-ray and 4K, I would love, love, love to see how gruesome that one would have been. The tone of the movie, the pace of the movie, the look, the color, the setting, the world they built in that movie, all very important things when watching a movie, and I would say they did pretty good in most parts. The one thing I like about this movie, and one of my favorite movie reviewers, Chris Thuckman, said it himself in his review, this movie is very watchable. It's a movie you can sit back and watch with a bucket of popcorn and not really have much to worry about uh, in terms of following it. It's it's fairly simple. Um, most Saw movies aren't as simple. Saw 4 and 5 being movies where if you blink, you miss a flashback, you don't know what timeline you're in, and it's just all jumbled up. With this one, the story is very straightforward and easy to follow. However, it's fast-paced and almost non-stop at all times. It's always tension-filled. There's always people yelling in scenes. There's people trying to figure something out. It's a trap scene. Then right after that, it's a screaming investigative scene. After that, it's a getting a jigsaw present scene where they have to hope it. It's just every scene is nonstop action, which I don't necessarily have a problem with, but there is good in movies with slowing down every now and then. The character development in movies are usually done during the slow scenes where someone's, you know, sitting down in their bed and talking to a friend, going out for dinner with a friend. Not much is going on, but a lot of story is being told. In this movie, the story is being told as it's happening, and it's just non-stop action. As for the tone of the movie, um, it's... As I said before, lots of tension, lots of action, but there is a lot of comedy thrown in there, and there's nothing I hate more in horror movies than forced comedy. It's some of the worst things, I would say. I've never cringed or groaned as hard in a movie theater than when I'm watching a horror movie and they just force in a joke at the worst moment. This movie did fantastic and really picking the right time to tell a joke. You know, with the main character played by Chris Rock, someone who has an expertise in comedy and in delivery, it was done so perfectly. Uh, you know, him being the one of the writers on the film really helped with him being able to, you know, write his own material, do what he needed to do to really give you those little moments of, haha, okay, that brought me back into a happier mood. Because I would say... With most action movies, uh, take the Marvel movies as an example, there are scenes that would make you cry in that movie, but they're able to weave in perfect comedy scenes to kind of regroup you, reground you, and make you feel two completely different sides of the feeling spectrum. It's great. 
and I feel like Spiral has moments where you're having a good time and laughing, and you're terrified shaking in your seat. Now, the overall setting and color look of the film, I would say, um, doesn't relate as much to the old Saw movies. Um, I just recently watched the entire Saw franchise with my Discord crew, which if you'd like to join my Discord and have weekly movie nights, you just join my Patreon. The link is in the description, and uh, just had to throw in a quick little plug, but... With the old Saw movies, you have that really claustrophobic feel. It's usually taking place in big factories and uh, small rooms and things like that, where this movie does have big factory settings. Uh, I feel like it's much more open. You know, it's a lot brighter. It doesn't have that green-ish tint that the old movies had. This one's more of a yellow kind of feel. Um, and I just, I guess I had more of a... I was able to breathe while watching this movie, when in some of the other Saw films, it's more of that tight and chest claustrophobic feel. So I think they did a great job with kind of being able to start fresh with this new sort of next step in a Saw franchise, rather than having to piggyback off of the past look, feel, pace, and story of Saw 1 through 7. Now, speaking of Saw 1 through 7 and the previous franchise, uh, comparing this movie to the rest, and I'm going to throw in Saw 8 Jigsaw there, um, as I said before, it did good in being its own kind of thing. Um, I would argue to say, too, that the only thing that it borrows from the other franchise is the traps, the name Jigsaw thrown every now and then, and the spirals. You know, it, it does a good job in kind of setting itself aside from the previous storyline. They do mention Tobin Bell's Jigsaw. Every now and then they'll throw in the aspect of all the old murders that happened, the old tests, the idea of taking life for granted. But the, what this movie does with the idea of bringing it into a new world is it's not just, hey, you didn't appreciate your life you're going to go into a saw trap and I'm going to let you appreciate life. It has now turned into, hey, you did something really bad in your life, so you deserve to be put in this trap. It's more of a substitute for, say, going to jail or, you know, receiving a death penalty. It kind of makes you not feel as bad for the people in traps because immediately before the their trap scene, you see why they're there. You understand why they were put there. And it kind of gives you that feeling of, okay, hey, Jigsaw Killer, you got a point there. Um, so I feel like it did a good job in kind of doing its own thing, turning that taking for life, taking life for granted message, and kind of just making it don't be a bad person. Um, I thought it did really good in that because it sets apart, you know, it sets itself apart from the rest of the franchise. I already touched upon the look and the feel of the old Saw movies compared to this one. Um, Jigsaw did a better job of being more of a bright, colorful movie. That one I wasn't a big fan of. I didn't like that one um, as much, but I would say Spiral was able to take the idea of Jigsaw and put it in a modern-day setting and bring it into a different world and have a different meaning while still paying respects to the idea of is Jigsaw doing something bad or is he actually helping the world, you know? Now, I won't be going into spoilers, but I do want to say that I would not be surprised or even angry if they completely took this movie and started a spiral franchise continuing this story with Chris Rock and the characters that were established because I really do feel like they have a lot of material here. They worked with a lot of different storylines. There's a lot of open ends when it came to the ending, and I would love nothing more than to see a Spiral 2, you know, in production, because the new world they opened with this, jig, this new Jigsaw, this new idea of what Jigsaw can be since, you know, John Kramer's been dead since Saw 3, they tried keeping him alive for more than half of the franchise. 
So being able to kind of pass the torch, um, not just from someone that's been uh, helping Jigsaw the whole time, like the twist they've been doing for the entire previous Saw franchise, starting with something new, giving that new twist of, all right, who's going to be the next dead guy standing up in the bathroom, like in Saw 1, doing something different was so so refreshing to see a twist like that rather than seeing the same twist that they did in Saw 2, in Saw 4, in Saw 7 of in Jigsaw of, hey look, turns out this person's been helping the whole time. Hey, wait a minute, the twist is this person's been helping this, this whole time, but before the other person. It just became so repetitive with that same twist throughout the Saw franchise. Seeing something new finally was just really refreshing, and um, I was really surprised to see a lot of people had tr like trouble enjoying this twist. Um, I will agree, it's a little, it's out of the left field. I didn't see it coming, um, and we're kind of getting into spoiler talk, so I'll wait until the end there, but. Definitely comparing this movie to the rest of the Saw franchise. I like it because it did what Jigsaw should have done with uh, the Jigsaw movie. I think that one came out in 2018. It should have separated itself the way Spiral did. And Spiral did a fantastic job in doing that. Time to get jiggy with Jigsaw. The new Jigsaw in this movie, um, the look, I uh, won't be saying who Jigsaw is in this movie or who the copycat killer is. I hated it in the trailers when I saw the new pig mask, when I saw the puppet that they show, the pig puppet, uh, dressed as a police officer in the trailer, and my god, the voice of Jigsaw in this, in the trailer, I hated every moment of it, and I was just thinking to myself, why are they doing this? You know, no one's ever going to be Billy the Puppet. You know, the, the original pig mask. All these things, they're changing. But I was surprised to say that as I was watching the movie, it grew on me. It made me realize I understand why they're not using Billy the Puppet. I understand why it's not John Kramer's voice. And I understand why it's not the original pig mask. It's separating itself. As I said before, it's showing you that this is a new Jigsaw. This is a new franchise that could be started with this movie carrying on from the legacy of the previous franchise. It's not going to piggyback off of nostalgia the way 2018 Jigsaw did. It, it completely kind of opened my eyes to, okay, Ryan, let go of the previous franchise and watch this movie for what it is, a standalone Jigsaw film, you know, something that is still in the same universe, yet trying to do something different. So for the most part, yeah, do I like Jigsaw's new voice? No. Do I understand why they did it? Of course. My favorite part and least favorite part about this movie, I would say my favorite part about this movie, hands down, is Chris Rock. I can watch this man do at least five more Saw films if they really want to milk it the way they did with the other franchise. He put a lot into this performance. He was the best part about the movie. He was very likable, yet in some scenes you kind of wanted to nudge him a bit because he was being a bit of an ass, but him being the one that set this movie in motion by going to Lionsgate, by pitching this idea, by being a writer and star in the movie, really, really showed me that he wanted to do this. And as I said before, it shows. So he definitely was my favorite part about the movie. My least favorite part about the movie was the ending of the movie. And I'm not going to say anything until we get into spoiler chat. Uh, so that's all I have to say. Least favorite part about the movie was the ending. trivia. So I thought I would throw in something fun in my movie reviews. If you guys want me to continue to do these, 
uh, just some fun trivia that I found online about the movie. I already read a couple uh, during the review, but I thought it'd be fun to let you guys know. This movie was delayed uh, four different times. The original release date was May 15th, 2020. And as you all know, due to certain things that happened in the year 2020, it got delayed. It got pushed back all the way to May 14th, 2021. So it was delayed a full year before getting released again. I thought that was really fun. Um, speaking of the release date as well, this is the first Saw film to not be released in October. Uh, as you all know, the Saw film uh, tagline in the trailers was, if it's Halloween, it must be Saw. So it, this being the first movie that wasn't released in October, I thought was really interesting. Uh, I mean, out of eight films, to think that all of them released in October, it's pretty good dedication from the uh, releasing department, marketing department, whoever controls when the movie's released. So, good job, Spiral. You broke the chain. The other two um, pieces of trivia I already read, uh, you know, with Chris Rock actually being a fan of the franchise and bringing this story of wanting to do another movie uh, to Lionsgate, you know, him putting it all in motion you know, wanting to get this done was a good one. And of course, as I mentioned in the traps category, director Darren Lynn Bowsman had to remove one of the traps from the movie that actually was a trap of someone getting their face cut off. Um, it had to be cut in order to make the movie an R rating because the rating association kept giving it an NC-17 rating. And if you all know, there's almost been no NC-17 rated movies because they would do terrible at the box office. Not many people would even be allowed to see them. Uh, so I'm sure that's why they had to remove that scene. But fingers crossed for an unrated director's cut with the scene in there. All right, all right, all right. We made it. I can ramble about movies all day long. If it were up to me with no cuts, this movie review would be at least two hours long. Spoiler time. Skip to the next timestamp of my rating to skip the spoilers. I'm going to give you guys some time, okay? Because I don't want you guys commenting, Ryan, you spoiled the movie for me. You're 30 minutes into the video. You spoiled it for yourself. Go ahead, take some time. Go to my rating. Go to the next one. you're here. You don't mind if I spoil it? Perfect. So, it turns out that William Shank, whew, Zeke Banks' rookie partner, is Jigsaw. And as I said before, I did not see it coming. You know, um, throughout the entire movie, there's a flashback that Zeke keeps going back to of when he first started as an officer, his corrupt partner, shot and killed a witness uh, for no good reason, no more than just police brutality. Uh, and Zeke turned him in, you know, got him fired and got him put away in jail. And it turns out that the person who was killed was the father of William Shank, the new rookie. So with a department full of corrupt cops that were trying to cover up the murder of his father, William Shank grew up, became an officer, and was destined to be the partner of Zeke Banks, the son of Detective Marcus Banks, who wrote in Article 8, which of course was an article that gave police officers authority to use brutality in any way they pleased. So, at the end of the movie, we realize it was him, which was really, really, like I said, out of left field because... His character, William Shank, actually dies in a saw trap in that movie. He's skinned alive. Uh, and we're shown this by a tattoo of some of the skin that Jigsaw sends to um, Zeke. So everyone's like, oh no, he's dead. And it just shows a quick scene of someone being skinned alive. But you never really see the face because it's skinned. Um, and it turns out that William Shank actually got the body of a homeless man 
to do that, it, it, it's super intricate, but I like the twist. I think it was great. Um, he actually offers Zeke a partnership, uh, saying, hey, you know what? You can be my partner in this. We can, you can be my inside informant, letting me know who the corrupt cops are. I'll take them out one by one. And of course, Zeke is like, dude, you're insane. I don't want to kill the police officers. I don't want to do this. But it really gives you that idea of he's doing this to make the world better by ridding the police department of the corrupt cops, you know, just the bad ones. Um, but doing that by murdering people, I don't think is, is that good. Um, so in the end, um, it all comes down to Zeke having to save his father, Marcus Banks, that is actually being put in a trap right in front of him, uh, with William Shank being there. So the three of them are in a room and it's just this super intense scene of, hey, you got one bullet in your gun, you can either shoot me and kill me for doing all this, or you can shoot a target on the wall and save your father. The police are on their way. You know, you have three minutes to decide. So it's a super intense scene. You obviously get that wonderful, beautiful, saw theme playing in the background that really amps everything up and it's just it's it's so amazing everything that was going on in that scene it ultimately ends with a SWAT team coming in the room that they're in uh William Shank Jigsaw is escaping in an elevator while Zeke is beating the hell out of him in an elevator and I don't know where the SWAT team goes to Marcus Banks the detective but the lights are super bright, they can't really see his face, uh, and the trap, I'm explaining this totally terrible, but I'm trying my best, the trap extends a shotgun from Detective Mark Banks' uh, hand, and Mark is like waving to the cops, like, get me down from here, um, but obviously the officers are like, gun, 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 so they shoot down Zeke's father, uh, killing Samuel Jackson's character, so Zeke runs away, and he's, like, on the floor with his hands on his head because the officer p are pointing the gun at him as well. And he's watching his dad get murdered in front of him the same way William Shank had to do when he was a kid, um, which I thought was really good symbolism there. And I'm telling you, the reason why the ending was the worst part of the movie for me is you have this amazing scene so much emotion, so much going on, screaming, music, everything, just at the peak level of excitement, you finally get to this moment of satisfaction, seeing everything come together. <sighs> Zeke looks at the elevator, the elevator door closes as he screams, cuts to black, and it's over. <sighs> I watched this movie with busy BASMR, and we both looked at each other like, huh? Like, no, that can't be all. I want to see if William was able to escape. I want to see what else Zeke had to say. So, that's why for me my biggest issue was it ended way, way too quick. So, with all that being said, I mean, if you watch this whole video to get my review, thank you so, so very much. I'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. It would have been an 8 out of 10, but the ending kind of brought it down for me. Busy B said the same thing. She was going to give it a 9, but she ended up giving it a 7.5. 7 out of 10, pretty good movie. If you're a fan of the Saw franchise, don't expect anything too crazy. Expect something that is separate from the franchise and yet still very good. I would highly recommend it if you're a horror fan and most definitely recommend it if you're a fan of gore and traps. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking with me and please, please, please let me know in the comments below if you want me to continue doing movie reviews. I was thinking about making my reviews exclusive on my Patreon, but I wanted to test the waters and share this to YouTube with you guys. Hope you enjoy the movie if you see it. 
Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to smile. Oh, God. Now I only have 30 seconds. See you next time.